Panasonic is bringing even more choice to the full-frame mirrorless camera market with the launch of the S1 and S1R. Both models have more to offer than rivals, showing that it doesn't always pay to be first. Both cameras beat Nikon and Canon in several ways. As you'd expect from Panasonic, video capabilities are stellar and the in-body stabilization looks very promising. However, I still have some questions, especially around the mount and autofocus performance. So far, I like what I see, and I think Panasonic's S1 and S1R will make your buying decision even tougher. The S1 and S1R are built for pros and serious amateurs. In fact, Panasonic took input from those folks to design the button layout and grip. They're dust, splash, and freeze resistant, and the shutter mechanism is one of the most durable out there. Unlike new models from Canon and Nikon, both have two card slots. One is XQD and the other one is SD, so you'll need two different types of cards, but at least you'll have a backup. Videographers will be glad to see mic and headphone ports, and the USB Type-C port can charge the battery. Battery life isn't great, so you'll need to carry extra cells. Unlike Nikon and Canon, Panasonic didn't build a new mount. Instead, it joined forces with Leica and used its L-mount. As such, there are already lenses available for the S1 and S1R. As for the mount, it's bigger than the one Sony uses. That means there's more room for in-body stabilization to work, and it's easier to build sharp, compact lenses. The S1 has a 24.2 megapixel sensor, and the S1R has 47.3 megapixels. The S1 has better low-light capability with up to 104,200 ISO, while the S1R maxes out at 51,200 ISO. Both have effective in-body stabilization that genuinely smooths out video. For photography, it can increase speeds by up to 5.5 stops with the body alone, or 6 with a compatible lens. Maybe the coolest thing about Panasonic's IS is the status scope. It overlays onto the display, showing how much you're moving off-center. The aim is to help you improve your handheld technique. The OLED viewfinders have the highest resolution on the market with 5.7 million dots and a 120Hz refresh rate. This tech obliterates the need for an optical viewfinder. The rear triaxial touchscreen can be tilted, but not all the way around for vloggers, unfortunately. For better or worse, Panasonic has stuck with contrast detect autofocus rather than using phase detect like Canon's dual pixel system. It felt the negatives of phase detect horizontal banding aren't worth it. Personally, I'm not so sure. In my brief time with the camera, the autofocus didn't seem quite as fast as it does on the GH5. It was slower in both video and photography mode, and face detection didn't seem to work quite as quickly. However, it's hard to judge autofocus in a short amount of time. By the numbers, the AF system focuses in 0.08 seconds, and you can shoot 9 frames per second with continuous autofocus. It works in low light down to about minus 6 EV. Additionally, the S1R can do face, eye, and subject tracking. For the first time, Panasonic can track animals, but unlike Sony's system, you can't follow their eyes, only their bodies. Video is where the S1 and S1R stand apart from each other. Panasonic considers the S1 a video camera first, while the S1R is for fashion, portrait, and landscape photography. Both can handle 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 180 frames per second, beating most rivals. However, the S1R is limited to 8-bit shooting. It uses the entire sensor with some line skipping at 4K. The S1, meanwhile, gives you a full sensor readout at 4K 30 frames per second, most importantly for pro videographers. It'll handle 10-bit video internally and externally at launch, with more features like 422 10-bit internal video coming later via firmware. Panasonic hinted that that might cost money, but has yet to reveal exactly how much. We knew that Panasonic's first full-frame mirrorless camera would be video-centric, and it didn't disappoint. At $2,500, the S1 is likely to be popular with videographers, but it's disappointing that the camera doesn't have a flip-out display. The other model, the $3,700 S1R, is a bit more complicated. It's a tough sell against the cheaper D800 from Nikon and Sony's A7R III. Its main claim to fame, in my opinion, is superior stabilization and higher resolution for landscape photography. However, the autofocus system doesn't look as good as its rivals. Still, it's a great start for Panasonic. We'll review both cameras in much more detail later, and should know better by then how they stack up.